Andrew's here. Thanks for stopping by. I uh, wanted to do a quick, just got in my um, UAD2 Duo, um, Duo, which I'm going to pop into my DAW to add to the solo card. And then I've got three AD UAD1 cards in there already, which basically I'm going to be, they're going to become disabled because I'm going to then update to the latest software uh, from Universal Audio with the latest plugins and all the plugin vouchers I'm going to get. I'm going to get a bunch of new plugins and stuff like that. One of which just came out yesterday that I could tell. Um, don't know if you can see it here, but it's the uh, Engel Amplifier Plugins, which came out now on uh, version 7.2 of the software. Uh, I'm on currently 5.8, if I remember correctly, uh, which still supports UAD1, which are my old cards, and the UAD2. And um, the architecture is different. Now the UAD2 cards also support 64-bit, which is great because I'm running, so uh, running Sonar X2, 64-bit all the way. I mean, I've got, you know, 64-bit version of Windows 8 I'm running. I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM in my computer. So with a 64-bit wide um, data path from the audio interface through the audio software, through the drivers, through the operating system, to the plugins, and um, I'll have, I'll be able to make more use of the memory that I have in my computer. Um, for plugins like this, memory overhead isn't that much of an issue, but when you start talking about virtual instruments, stuff like, you know, drum sets and, uh, you know, symphonic stuff or whatever, the 64-bit plug-in with a 64-bit operating system with a 64-bit DAW, all that adds up to where you no longer have a 4 gigabyte of RAM limitation to fit everything under the umbrella. You can literally use all the memory that you have available in your system and not with no constraints as far as operating system or your plug-in being a 32-bit you know, or whatever. You've got full memory addressing up to, I think, I think it's a terabyte or a terabyte and a half or some crazy number like that in terms of RAM addressing. But anyway, so I got the uh, UAD2 Duo, which is basically two uh, DSP processor chips on there, uh, of course, and add that to the solo that I have. And the way they've done the math, Universal Audio, is uh, each, each card on the new UAD2 platform the DSP chips on there are, are what they what they actually on their mathematical scale of it, each core is two and a half times more powerful than the DS, DSP chip on the old the old UAD1 cards. So in essence, I've got three of the old UAD1 cards in my computer, and I just put in a UAD2 solo. Solo is two and a half times more powerful than the old chips. So I essentially have two and a half of the old US UAD1 cards on, the, on my solo card. And then the uh, Duo has two cores, or two chips, excuse me. Um, and then with the two chips being the equivalent of two and a half of the old UAD1 cards or chips previously, you know, um, it's like having five UAD1 cards on my computer. So between the two, I'm looking at about like seven and a half of the old UAD1 cards which now would have been 10 or 10 and a half with the three that had in the computer, but unfortunately I'm going to lose them uh, to upgrade to the latest version of the software so I can get the 64-bit plug-in, which also decreases latency because when you run a 32-bit plug-in and a 64-bit DAW host and everything else being 64-bit, your software host, your like Sonar or Pro Tools, whatever, actually have to create, well, excuse me, maybe not Pro Tools, they've just come out 64-bit on their latest uh, Pro Tools 11, and I'm not sure how they're handling 32-bit plugins, if they're doing those at all, if they're all having to be 64-bit under that new AAX protocol. But I'm not a Pro Tools guy, so I really don't know, don't quote me on anything. Um, but any other DAW host that has a 64-bit architecture, if you put in a plugin that's not aware uh, excuse me, if you put a plug in that's not 64-bit itself, then the software has to wrap it in what they call a, 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 a plug-in wrapper or whatever, which allows a 32-bit plug-in to work in a 64-bit host, um, which is how I've been running my UAD plugins from the UAD1 cards. Well, guess what? Those wrappers add latency to the signal path. 
So you don't usually track directly through those plugins. They're probably better for like mixing and only mixing, which is what I've been using. But this plugin here certainly looks interesting, and I may be tempted to get it just for some noodling around or whatever. Um, but to do that, if you want to do any live tracking, you're going to need the lowest latency possible, which means I have to go, one, with the latest version of software to get the plugin, but two, it'll allow me to go 64-bit on the plugin, which will, of course, late, lower the latency on the, on the interface. Anyway, enough of the BS. Uh, let me go ahead and open this bad boy up. And uh, I guess make it an official unboxing, since uh, I guess it'll be two in a week, right? Uh, I won't actually bore you guys with the whole installation, because, I mean, it's... The same as the other one was, uh, and I'm anxious to get this thing installed and get it all authorized and then finish changing the strings on my guitar so I can get to recording. So uh, here we go. Uh, remember from the previous one, we got the little uh, cheat sheet that it comes with, your major, major, uh, majorly thick uh, UAD uh, inverse audio catalog, the infamous foam. Oh, this has actually got a little... Um, like egg crate uh, texture on the other side, so that might actually come in handy. Maybe, maybe not. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, a UAD2 Duo. Let me open this up. And of course, once it's been plugged into the computer, I'll run through the software, install it, and so forth. Uh, and then I've got to go in and actually go through the process. We'll take you to the website so you can authorize and have it authorize all your plugins for that card as well. So here's the card, and of course now you'll, if you remember the last one was a lot smaller, was smaller than a case of a CD. This one is actually larger than the first one because it's got the two cores, and you'll see the two cores uh, right up top here, and all the other stuff of the card. And this is more of like a full-size card, more about the same size as the original UAD ones. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this in and get it all going. Um, and that's all I have for today. Just wanted to go ahead and show you guys a little quick unboxing on the UAD2. Um, I'm probably going to start doing some in DAW videos here as I start setting up everything for the recording. Um, I'll, I had a question in a previous video. Uh, somebody wanted to know uh, why I mentioned low pass, high pass uh, in my last video on the guitars. Um, and I'll go over that in, in an upcoming video. Uh, I won't go into it now because I've already probably spent way too much talking in this one. So uh, anyway, uh, rock on guys. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I'll probably just shoot this video up and uh, so you guys can enjoy it and see an unboxing of a second UAD 2 card in a, in a week or so. And uh, hopefully we'll start seeing the fruits of this labor here before too long as I try to get this album recorded, tracked, mixed, mastered, and out there for the masses. So. Anyway, guys, thanks again. Rock on. We'll catch you later.